Well, kia ora, everyone, and thank you for joining us for what I think is our 10th Try This workshop. How about that? Um, we've got people here from all over Aotearoa and also Tim joining us from the UK. So uh, thanks for joining us. We're going to be looking today at uh, key number 10. And when we when we start our New Zealand sessions, we like to start with karakia or a whakatauki. And I've chosen this one today. Um, nā tō roro, nā taku roro, kā ora ai te iwi. And it's a, it's a very well-known one here in New Zealand around um, bringing together our knowledge and uh, creating something together. And I thought that was an appropriate one, given what I'm going to ask you to do in a moment, which is to all share to create something together. Um, so, yeah, get ready. <laughs> we're going to we're not going to do what we've traditionally done up to now which is to re re review and look back at the key that we looked at last week because we or last month because we've kind of noticed that uh, usually that results in a little bit of a resounding silence but having said that is there anybody who was dying to report on what they've been trying with the keys did anybody bring anything to share if now if so, now is the moment to break that resounding silence. <laughs> Anybody been playing with last week's key or any of the other keys? No, see what I mean? It's fine, it's fine. So we're gonna take the pressure off from here on in and not, not keep that segment of the sessions in because it just makes people feel a bit awkward. So we're gonna crack on with key number 10. Um, and this one is, called um assemble an image and i'm going to divert from what i usually do those of you who've been coming to our sessions for a while know that um often i will follow step by step what's in the book and tim will extemporize well i'm going to try and extemporize a little bit this time <laughs> i'm going to break the rules if you look at the key 10 example uh new zealand example in the book it's it's based around a context to do with a bird rescue center and it's based around the bird rescue center that's here in Palmerston North at Massey University and it's it's a cool example but the one I'd like to share with you is one that I've been working on for it for a different context and it's something entirely different so um you won't have read this one before and if you're coming to the drama New Zealand conference in September you won't need to come to my session because this is the one I'm going to do for that <laughs> so um I'm not going to start with the key itself, although we could. I'm going to I'm going to start with a, a little bit of a scene setting to to take us into the context. So, those of you who've been using the keys for a while will recognise how I've made this little story. But are you ready to come on? Come into a story with me. We're going into the past. We're going into. We're going to imagine. Um, I'm going to just turn us to a blank slide so we can concentrate. Um, we're going to imagine the year 1893 to Wanganui Tara, what is now called Wellington. And we're in a formal space. It's, it's a large space with balconies on every side and there's dark wooden paneling on the walls. The space is illuminated by three gas lanterns hanging from an elaborately decorated plaster ceiling. Um, and these are white and bright overhead. On either side of the room, there are studded leather benches set in rows facing each other across a wide carpeted aisle. And seated on these benches are do dozens of people, all of them men. They're wearing long coats over black trousers and shiny shoes. And there's this rumble of conversation, bass and tenor voices. Suddenly a door swings open and through it appears another man. He's struggling to push something, a wheelbarrow. There's a collected, collective gasp and silence as all the heads turn to stare. And in the wheelbarrow, there's a heavy roll of paper, so large that the man has to remove his coat and stretch his arms wide to fit it. Right. 
So before I go on, what what did you make of that? You can unmute and tell us. What did you hear? What did you notice? What go, Daphne? Just the um patriotic, no, sorry. Um the male uh <laughs> environment and I mean, I think I've already guessed what it's about, but okay. that that hesitancy of my God, do we have to face this this sort of ang yeah th this male world? Interesting, isn't it? Patriotic and patriarchy. They I've never mm. thought about it before, but I wonder if they come from the same kind of place. I think patriotic, patriotic is the patriotic, word I meant. Pa patriotic yeah. might have been the word you're reaching for. Mm. Anyone else got any comments? Shona. Um, I'm thinking government, a government house, government something. What took you there? I suppose the leather benches. Mm. They've seen each other. Um, <clears throat> you nodded, Makaira. Yeah, I, I, that kind of the plush kind of setting and with the le leather benches kind of made me think of and then being in Wellington made me think of Parliament. Mm. There's not too many places where benches face each other across a space. If it had been pews, we might have thought church or something like that. But um, there's not many places we have that benches across a space. The, the, the wheelbarrow was quite an unexpected <laughs> detail. <laughs> Yeah, I can't think of too many times I've seen wheelbarrows being wheeled into houses of parliament, but maybe that's just uh, something that goes on all the time that I haven't seen. <laughs> Were there people he, here? Did he have some kind of like, but okay. um, okay, petition thing? Well, I don't know. That's what I had straight in my head was like parliament petition, big roll of paper. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Daphne was saying, oh, I think I know what this is. Is that where your head went to, Daphne? Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, I've lost sound. That's okay. So I, um, I'm i I'm going to move us forward because this key, this key we're, we're not all about the, about the dissecting of an example, but you can imagine you could stay with this part a lot longer with children, couldn't you, and pull that image apart a little bit more, pull that 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 uh description apart we could talk about the lights and the uh, and where the darkness was and things like that but yes i i wanted to give us that little story just to drop us into the scenario we are indeed in in parliament um and the the large roll of paper would have looked something like this um and without a word this man places the giant roll of paper down on its side in the central aisle, holds on to the paper's end of the paper strip with one hand, or actually I would imagine probably had to stand on the end of the paper strip. And with the other, he gives a mighty push and the heavy roll of paper starts to unroll down the whole length of the room between the benches, leaving that trail of paper behind, which as you can see here is full of handwriting. And we can imagine all the men's heads turning as the roll <laughs> travels down the room and their bodies leaning forward. And finally, with a thud, that giant paper roll hits the back wall of the room and stops. So, yes, again, we could we could ask the children what they make of that. We could we could dissect that image. And when I've done that before, it's it's quite intriguing for those who've never heard of this story and for those who know that story, it's like, I know what this is, I know what this is, I know what this is. And um, yeah, what it is, is the arrival of the suffrage petition, um, which was unrolled in just such this way in the year 1893. Now this picture isn't actually the photo of the New Zealand suffrage petition because that large, huge roll has, has been lost, but there are several smaller rolls that were delivered on the same day and th so those are the, that 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 photo there is actually from a similar petition that was used in Australia in the state of Victoria but these are our own ones here which you might have seen in the archives in Wellington but they're still there and preserved today it was a monster petition with 29,000 signatures 
from women all over New Zealand demanding the right to vote. Um, and that room I described, uh, this is where we're going in our for our focus today on this key. We're, we're, we're thinking about that room I described. Um, here's, here's a photograph of it. Do you recognize it from the, the words I spoke at the start? What can you see here? There are your studded benches, look. Is there anything that wasn't described in the description that's drawing your attention? I think the height and the size and the fact that there's a gallery. Hmm. There is at least one gallery. It could even be two, mm. right? I, I assumed in my usual UK centric brain that that it was that it would it looked exactly like the UK Parliament with the you know the banked be benches on either side facing each other. But the benches here seem to be arranged in in sort of behind tables in in batches. Is that is that is that right? Is that how that is? Looks that yeah. way. Mm. With more, with lot, with certainly a lot more space. Mm. Yeah. That's not what I expected. I'm quite struck by how how elaborate the plaster work is on the ceiling. Um, quite something. And um, anybody else got anything else they wanted to draw our attention to? Is it still there? It isn't. Um, <laughs> that that sounds like a question that you were prompted to ask, but no, he wasn't. No, no, no. I was about to tell you that the the central lanterns here. Can you see them hanging down? The 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 um the central lanterns were gas powered, and the movement of air was I'm quoting here aided by gas lighting within the lantern, and. But the MPs continued to complain about poor ventilation until the chambers met a fiery end when the Parliament mm. buildings burnt down in 1907, probably caused by those gas lanterns. So this was this was a building at the time, but it doesn't remain today. So we can do we can do many things with this context. Um and in the past, we've talked about, um, in past times that I've taught this, I've used other keys to invite people to imagine being somebody at that moment who was alive at that moment in time, perhaps somebody in the room, perhaps somebody not in the room, perhaps somebody not interested at all or represented at all by what was going on in this space. And we've had some really interesting um ideas and from children and participants about that. We we can have people you know, watching the roll of paper go down. We can have women at home, you know, looking after their children. We can have people people uh, on the marae completely disinterested in what's going on here in Parliament. So that you can see that there's lots of ways we could use keys to explore the human response to that moment when that suffrage petition um, was presented. Uh, perhaps the perspective of a child who doesn't yet have a vote and yet is affected by every decision these adults make. So there's lots we can do with humanity. What I'm going to invite us to do is um, think about the space. So just for a second, I'm going to stop sharing this and I'm going to take us... Hello, Annette. Thanks for joining us. I'm going to take us into um, a whiteboard. So just one second. And I'm going to share this whiteboard with you. I'm going to make sure I get the right one. Can you see that? That's arriving. Makaida's there. This is my attempt to do this activity, which would normally be done with large pieces of paper and cutouts, but to try and do it digitally. <laughs> can you, can you, Makada, I can see you're on there. Can you pick up one of these 
black shapes and just check check that you can slide it around not the one that's on the on the outline but the ones at the bottom can you pick those up and move them around you can and can you move around the little labels on the right there okay right pop them back down again for a second so what we have here is a floor plan of these of this the parliamentary buildings as they appeared in 1877. The room you just saw is this one here. I don't know if you can see my cursor. The House of Representatives. That's that space there. Can you see that? All right. Um, and what we're going to be have the power to do in our imagination is to, of course, the outline of the building. It there there is an there is an actual right answer to this, to how the building was laid out. But much more interesting is how we might lay it out if we were the people who were thinking about how to use this space. Um, so what I'm going to invite you to do is to, 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 to move pieces around, to place them. You might move, I thought you would be, you might be interested to see what the actual, um, labels on the floor plan are but it might be that we want a different thing in our parliament building in which case feel free to make a new label label i'm going to show you how you can do this so i'm picking up this object here and i'm going to put it on that thing there and i'm actually i'm placing something that actually is in the in the correct place for the historical correct thing and that believe it or not is the safe i kind of love that right at the center of the building someone decided to put a safe. I wonder what they used to store there, lots of valuable, probably money. I don't know what, what else you would want to keep in a safe. If this if this seems quite small to you, you can, you can enlarge it. We can zoom in and out. But the invitation is to move rooms around, label rooms, but justify where you're putting them, why, why you would put them where they are so um does that make sense and we're not trying to guess what the building of the time was like we're trying to say how we would create a building and why what does it need a parliament like this who'd like to start us off You can, if you don't mind unmuting, it would be great. It would be great because then we can hear what you're thinking. Who's moving that one? So, so Viv, I've got uh, on, on the on the list of words. Yeah. It, it says like speaker, like yeah. three or four times. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Okay. That's because I've taken those labels from the historically accurate floor plan plan. So that tells mm -hmm. us something about how many spaces the speaker of the parliament had in the original oh, okay. parliament floor plan. Are you going to decide that the speaker has that many spaces in your version of things? And someone's just found something out as well, which is that we can make rooms bigger and smaller. So we can, so these are, uh, they were placed roughly the correct proportions that they were on the real floor plan, but we can change things. We have the power of imagination and we can say, I'm going to make that room bigger and I'm going to decide that the kitchen is an enormous space right next to there because. So have a play, but the only thing I would ask is that you share your thinking. So I've made this room here really big because this is the ideas room. Oh, we've got an ideas room. I think so. Would you like to label it? Do you know how to do that? You can click on the T over there. there at the on the left and you should be able to make oh, some text appear. I'm just going to take the arrow off unless that person definitely wanted to make the arrow. I'm going to assume you didn't. So we now have an ideas room. Who, what, why is this, why is that there? And why is it 
the right sort of space to have in a parliament? Because it's the beginning and I've put it far away from the actual chamber because it needs to go through some other rooms first before it gets to the actual chamber, I think. So it's just the beginnings of ideas and things. And it's also access to the wider world out here. So there so there's some, kind of, um, there's some kind of entrance way where people mm. are invited from the outside yeah. and you're seeing this as a, as a free thinking space, a formulating space. Mm. And it's symbolic to you that the ideas are carried from that fomenting space through to where they're put into law in the house. Am yes. I hearing you right? Yes. Yes. And who placed this one here? This large room with the hallway around the outside. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Someone's putting the labs in the corner. Yeah, that's me. I'm very... Yeah. I thought I'd keep those in there. Why is that, Tim? Well, there's a couple of things really that just that just just attracted me to the idea of putting the lavatory. And one was that it would be a practical thing, so having it close to the House of Representatives. But now I've put it there, I'm thinking there seems to be only one lavatory. Um, so perhaps that should be really more in the centre. But the other thing that that occurred to me was that it would be just male. Mm. If it was just for the representatives, whereas if it was somewhere else in the building, then it may have to be, they may have to cater for both men and women, or perhaps they just didn't bother to cater for women at all. Well, there's a uh, label there that says housekeeper. Uh huh. So perhaps she's got a. And I don't know. Own... I don't know about you, but when I think of the 1870s. And I think of housekeeper. I'm. I've got assumptions about the, the gender of that person. Sure. Yeah, Who's moving Major really Campbell happy. around? Oh, I'm yeah. trying to do stuff with, but I can't figure out the technology. You can't. Would you like me to move <laughs> it for you, Makaida? Um, I put it. I've put the topmost thing in place, and I thought I'd do this um, new. What is it? New members room, but I can't seem to drag it all oh, so if you if you oh, click your um if you press yeah. your mouse at the same time as moving that yeah that, that seems to work but i'm also happy to move anything from it so 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 tell me what what appealed to you about having the new members room up there and what do you think it might be or what do you want it to be in your version of parliament that you're creating oh i didn't think too much about it. i just wanted to help somehow but i, thought, <laughs> I um, like it but um i guess um it's a place for people to hang out it's, um the new people there the new um, people the new yeah. uh so <laughs> when you hear of new members do you suppose these are new uh staff members new members of parliament yeah new members of parliament i suppose so they got their own space yeah they're pretty the lucky is that a place for it I know that what you were doing was mostly practicing moving things around, but you have lots of power here. So, um, where do you where do you want your new members to to be? It's, I think it's all right there at the moment. Yeah. Okay. It's quite a long walk to the lavatory. Oh no, someone's moved the lavatory now, so the new members don't have to hold on all that far. That's good. Yeah, I thought I thought if there was only one, it needed to be in the middle. Really, the right so. needs to be in the middle, right? Yeah. Someone's moving the long, thin built room and yeah, that's strangers. Is that you as well, Tim? Yeah. Is anybody else having technical issues and wants me to move something for them? There's just something that I just discovered. What's that? I don't know if, if other people know this, but if you click on a a room, a lift, uh, in the bottom left-hand corner, you can rotate. there's a sort of a, 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 an, an, a, an arrow that points both ways. If you... Click on that. You can actually change the orientation of the room. Yeah, yeah, you can. That might, that might. All right, I'm going to leave you to play, but I do invite you to talk through your thinking because, you know, we, we've got a group of people here and we're sharing our baskets of knowledge and our thinking and we're all making meaning. So I'll shut up and I'll let you, <laughs> I'll let you speak. I've just moved the messenger's room. Because mm -hmm. I think communication 
is such a big deal between um, the House of Representatives and all the people who work to feed them information. So I've put the messages room up somewhere near those new members because I don't think they're considered really important, but their function is important to get the messages, um, you know, answer the questions when somebody's, um, you know, a member of parliament doesn't know what's going on and they need a messenger to give them some information. So I, I've, I, they attracted my attention was mm. the messengers. Thank you. And of course, but, these are pre-digital times, so they literally the messengers would have run rung around, and mm. um, yeah, it, it struck me that word messengers. So, the person with the tea room, um, <laughs> you can, yeah, we can bring. I've an lost object my building. Back. I put my building centre back, and now it's disappeared. It's gone behind the cutout, right? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, would you well, like me to bring room, it forward again? Yeah, please. The tea there room. There you go. There it is. So I, I know it's a little bit of getting used to this. This oh, you got the tea go. room. Here we where go. Did you yep. put the tea room? Just next to the because this is where they need to eat, right? This right. is where right. I'm thinking tea. I'm thinking this is where they go to eat, and politicians, I'm sure they like to eat a lot. So we'll have it right next door to the House of Representatives, so they can pop right out. Yeah. Right. What do you suppose the strangers' room is, Tim? I think it's the balcony where the um, the people who come to visit but aren't members can watch. Mm. Mm. They're strangers because they're they're outsiders. They're not they're not MPs. That was my assumption. Mm. What's happening with the housekeeper up in the top right? Um, I put there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I put the housekeeper up there because I think she's because there's stairs there, and I feel like they would have put the housekeeper onto the stairs at that at that time. An interesting thought. <laughs> so she's sort of lurking. Yeah, it's a bit of Harry Potter thing going on there. Yeah, I'm having I'm having sound trouble. So if you can't hear me, I'm sorry. Loud and clear. Is someone coming to join us? It's going to wonder what we're doing. Hey. Kia ora, Rachel. We're building a House of Parliament from eighteen seventy seven. You can click on things and move them into the outline and then you can label them. So this is the day, this is the time that the women's suffrage petition was delivered in Wellington. And we're just thinking about what the parliament might have been like, but what well, we've also got creative freedom to add rooms or relabel rooms or decide new things. For example, Annette decided we needed a new ideas room right next to the library. Oh, the library. Someone snuck that in there. Who was that? Yeah, I did that because I thought that the library would be a good place next to the ideas room to go and go, oh, could this work? Maybe we need to do a bit of research around something or other for the ideas. Right. So I'm getting the idea that this parliament's uh, going to innovate, but also be careful to refer to history and written knowledge and... That's what you're seeing. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm kind. Of, I'm probably going off <laughs> off track, and there I've kind of lost track of it because I wasn't here for that first little bit of the conversation around um, the the 1877 Parliament. I'm kind of going, cool. Let's make a new Parliament. <laughs> Absolutely, you've been invited to do that. So, so yeah. in a moment, I will show you how the 1877 Parliament was laid out, We're, and nothing we can do with this is going to break that. But we've got the opportunity to imagine what we might do. It, so it's not a case of try and guess what it was like or build yeah. a puzzle. It's a kind of, con yeah, we're assembling an image. We're doing that to make meaning and to to think so that, about, because spaces speak, don't they? Yeah, they do. Spaces so speak. Us, yeah, they're like a system. 
and they say things about the parliament that was they do and i i did add i did add where the house of representatives was because at the very beginning we visited that real historical space so it gave us just a starting point but people are starting to play and have fun and make rooms bigger and smaller um keep sharing your thinking I, I'm, I'm conflicted because I, I want to do things for now creatively, but I know that that was not be not what it would be like. <laughs> That's all right. And and I think I think what I'm trying to get across is that is create a way because and, and tell us why you don't think it would be like that. That's it's self interesting, right? Mm. Yeah. So we've got a scullery behind our tea room. Is that yeah. the thing? Who put that one that's, there? Uh, that's where they keep, that's or, or the cooking department, you know. Mm. It, it's a priority. It's when you have parliamentary guests, you can look after them. We're really um, building a lot of things around this, around this space. So we've got comfort, haven't we? We've got um, food, food preparation. We've got the lavatory there, right where people need it. Someone's um, created a titirity space. Tell me about that. Yeah, decision. That was me. Um, <laughs> I, I made this because I really wish they had that and that it was a space that honoured the treaty way back in 18, <laughs> whatever it was. And so, yeah. I yeah, I really... Want what do you suppose there. would go on in there? Um, a coming together, a figuring out of systems that... that gave effect to Te Tiriti. Um, a, a, an understanding of the two cultures that were coming together in that treaty and of the partnership that would be shown throughout all the legislative chambers mm -hmm. that, that would went on. Yeah. And I, I'm really um, kind of upset that there's this... Uh, Māori Native Affairs Committee. Mm. It's a word we wouldn't use now. Yeah. No, not not at all. And so, um, yeah. So yeah, and 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 it's interesting that it's yeah. There was an the, yeah affairs committee as if it's like an affairs off to the side, like right. You've got to deal with the affairs of, but it doesn't really say anything about the treaty that is that needs to be worked on together if that makes sense if i'm hearing you right you would quite like utility space to be that house of representative space not some yeah, special yeah. other yeah. thing right? absolutely yeah does it surprise you to hear that the that there was a designated space in 1877 for maori affairs i i don't think they that um, I'm not surprised, but I think it's more of a how do we deal with the Māori affairs rather than a partnership work space. with a partnership space. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and it would be, oh, there's some conflict down in somewhere. Let's sort out how we're going to deal with it. <laughs> It'd be interesting a... to know what things went on in there, wouldn't it? Yeah. Bellamy's. Does anybody know what Bellamy's refers to? I didn't change the label. I thought it might be a, a, a um, restaurant or a cafe. Yeah, it still is, isn't it? Today, mm, yeah. to this day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought that was fascinating that Bellamy's, the, the, the restaurant, was part of Parliament back there. So I, I left that there in case it rang a bell for anybody. I I'm love that every single thing you've moved, um, Makara, has to do with food and <laughs> feeding people. And <laughs> a big value. Um, can I just ask? Yeah. Um, the So the safe, is it a safe for putting valuables or a safe for storing food? That's a great question. I suspect the original was a safe for storing valuables when I look at the thickness of the walls. Well, yeah. Before you came, Rachel, I moved that on to demonstrate how to shift things, and I did move oh, it right. into the actual spot in the 1877 floor plan where the safe is found. Huh? So I'm surmising, I, mean, I haven't seen any 
any writing about this, but I'm surmising that was a safe, like a bank safe or a a cash safe. Yeah. So it would be a bit odd to itemise it <laughs> if it was simply a place where they get food because there were no refrigerators. Yeah, right. But... They did have food safes, but I'm whoever's yeah. trying to move that one, I'm just going to uh, help you bring it to the front. Sorry. I keep making it a bit bigger because I can't read the words with it this small. No, go for it. Yeah, make it bigger if you need to. No, I mean like this and just putting it there. Right, Put yeah. The no, do what no, you need to there, do. Yeah. There. I can make the whole thing a bit bigger if that helps. That's better. I actually thought everybody was in control of their own view, but I think I'm in control of everyone's view. Don't you think it's interesting? I think it's interesting that, um, well, put it this way. Here's a floor plan of Parliament, and yet some rooms are labelled Major Campbell and Mr Otterson. <laughs> you know that someone's a, a, what do you call it, a, an institution around the place when you've got a room that's got their name on, don't you think? Imagine having a floor plan of the school that you work at but it's got the person's name, not just their their role. Um, and I had to look up what Mr. Otterson and Ms. Major Campbell were to find out that they were committee clerk and second clerk, because those weren't actually on the plan, just the names. <laughs> Tells you something about them, doesn't it? So um, Legislative Council, what do you suppose goes on in there? Ah, uh, they make the rules. They make the rules. Yeah. yeah, they make the rules of Parliament. Just guessing. Yeah, sounds like it to me too. So everybody's been quite obliging to the to history and um, kept things the way they were, kept the names and labels. I suppose that the the game that I've asked you to play kind of suggests that you can. That that's the job to move the rooms and to move the labels, but it's it's also okay to decide, like Annette did, that we need new ones. <clears throat> Someone's done a sticky note. <laughs> <laughs> the gates of hell. <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> Is that you, Makoda? <laughs> You've got a cheeky face, <laughs> a cheeky expression on. Why did you add the gates of hell, Makoda? Well, there's some legislation, I, I guess, you know, being parliament, it's, um, you, this, you never know where the, where the horns might be on the head. But um, I, um, I was just thinking, you know, with some legislation, they there's contestable and stuff, and there's some things they have hired away. So it was not just being cheeky, but also kind of thinking of, you know, um, disposing of the evidence uh -huh. of some of, the, some of the things that get brought to brought to Parliament or get ignored, or all those kind of things. Right. So what? I'm I'm just I just really want to picture what goes on in that space. Take us through it. Take take us through it. When someone steps into those rooms, it's a series of little rooms. Yeah. What's on in there? Well, I didn't I didn't make that the way it was, but um I it's where people it's where it's like the closet, it's where people get rid of things. Mm. People, ideas, concepts, laws. unwanted or un unwelcome or people have brought them to the place and the people in power don't want them so they lose yeah them. yeah all those things sounds uh, and i wonder if it would be called the gates of hell uh, it, on a floor <laughs> plan or is that just the way that the people who know about it talk about it amongst themselves yeah that's the second one and what would it be called on the floor plan oh some some kind of um you know maybe it's filing room yeah, filing, filing room. room there you go right, filing right, room. right i've got it now i've totally got that space in my head thank you for taking us there 
Well, uh, it looks like in our version, Mr. Otterson and Major Campbell are not getting their own space. And I think that's fair enough myself. We've got a large library. Oh, someone's added some more um, water closets. Some more. Uh, I don't know the difference between a lavatory and a water closet. WC. Did, does can anybody enlighten me? I thought they're the same thing. I did too, but they have their own separate labels in in this floor plan. Anybody want to comment about the the um, decisions they've made before we move on? I need to know what the difference between a, um, a lavatory and a water closet is now. So I just said that. that. Yeah, I don't know either. It's, it, we might have to put that up on the wandering wandering wall in the classroom and go and look it up because I haven't got a, a simple answer for you. Okay. Older turn, isn't it? Well, yes, but what? Why do you suppose they used both on the same? Have they? Oh, they're both labels from the. Yeah, I, the labels I gave us here are directly copied from the plan, with the exception of um, the translation of uh, the Native Affairs Committee, which I've given the modern name to. And the other exception is Mr. Austin and Major, Major Campbell. I looked yeah. up what they did for a living. It is. It is. Okay. So the difference between a, a, a lavatory and a water closet is to do with the fixtures, the fixtures uh -huh. and fittings. So in a lavatory, you have a sink or a basin for washing your hands and face. Whereas ah. a water closet on the other hand is an actual toilet or commode. So they used to divide so, the two things up? Possibly. Yeah, probably. Lavatory means a place you can wash. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Mm. Oh, we did learn something. <laughs> yeah. We're just we're slotting Mr. Otterson into the hallway. There is this sense of wanting to put all the labels in, isn't there? It's, it's quite interesting. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, you're just, you're just <laughs> popping them in. I, I think that I think because this is the first time I've done this without it being bits of paper and physical labels and picking things up and moving them around. I think digitally we we kind of feel like we want to tidy up, don't we? Yeah. Oh look, there's a library next door to Bellamy's. Do we need two libraries? Uh, I mean, you can make your case, yeah. but uh, <laughs> tell me what's in in each of them. I think it's important to have as many libraries as we possibly can. <laughs> and one could be like, um, one could be a library on like worldwide library, and then one could be specifically a New Zealand archival library or a research library just for Aotearoa New Zealand. Okay. Is there anything else I should be asking these people, Tim? before we pause and talk about this key. I am going to show you the 1877 floor plan in a moment, but is there, are there other questions you'd be asking at this point? No, not in terms of, um, no. I mean, uh, there's obviously loads of things that could be talked about in terms of developing the context mm -hmm. here. Um, but I guess you're going to go on to ask people about their um, thoughts on the experience yeah. of doing this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just oh, just I've making sure. I've got my decide. own, but but, but yeah. I don't think there's anything specific. No. I I guess at this point, as teacher, I'd be I'd be interested in asking students, you know, what what else might a parliament need, or what what what? Yeah, I I might be kind of trying to critique the parliament and the solve it, but I think people have played around with that. So yeah, let's do that. Let's just one. Sorry, Viv, it's just one thing occurred to me. Yeah, go on. That, um... That yeah is that that we, we you gave us a kind of a boundary. Which yes, is I did give you fine, a boundary. Right? Um, so it might be quite interesting to ask what's outside. So one one thing in particular oh, yeah. is the role of horses. Mm. I always when I, when I whenever I think about this period in history, I always think about 
how the differences between the way that children experience the world now and how people at that time and one of the thing would have been horses horses would have played a major part in the organization of parliament i imagine because there's such a there's such there's such an important aspect of obviously transport and everything but there, there's so many things that need to be done to look after horses so outside the building i imagine around the building there must have been stables and yards and places for the horses to drink and eat and there would have been all the infrastructure for that which is all which is which is all gone now and we're, and children well we're adults we don't tend to see it unless it's pointed out to us really mm. so That's maybe nice. so we could have we could have we could have thought about what's outside that boundary nice yeah cool all right so 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 let's just stop as participants and think as teachers about about this key and what it's offered us um and, and what I'm really interested to hear your experience of doing it. Of course, we were doing it digitally, which was different. Uh, what were your thoughts, Tim? You start, and then we'll see what others have to say. Well, a, a bit like like we were saying last week, the difference between teaching it and facilitating it and actually doing it is really because I've I've never I mean I've done things like this with classes on many occasions, mm. but not actually done it myself. And doing it myself, I, 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 to start with, I kind of was kind of, I don't know about everybody else, but I was kind of interested, but but kind of vaguely. And then, <laughs> but as I, as I started to get into it, I started to become more and more kind of invested in the, in the whole kind of creation of the building and where everything was and how people got from one place to another. And then it all, I, I just felt myself becoming more and more invested in the in the place itself mm. um, and the actual process of doing it which is not the same as it would be in class because obviously we'd all be we'd have it on the on the floor and we'd all be mucking in which would be quite mm. a different experience it would but actually doing it this way was 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 quite interesting actually and i i got a little bit obsessive about trying to fit things inside and changing <laughs> the size of the buildings and things and so uh, the rooms and stuff so yeah that was it was yeah, it was interesting for me anyway. I don't want to speak for anybody else. How about you, Annette, with that kind of tension you felt between being creative and being historically accurate? I'm interested in what that was like. Yeah, I, I, I kind of wondered. Am I allowed? Yeah, I it was. It was a, um, a thinking about permission of. Um, you know what I can do and what I can't do and I guess being creative and it brings up a whole lot of other stuff and it's whether the teacher wants to go there or whether so how, framing it at the very beginning of um, what you're allowed to do and what you aren't allowed to do changes how it is if we're just if we're just playing with the 1877 labels and the and the things it gives a different feel than if you are and I I just wonder whether you know maybe you do it twice you do it okay it's 1877 let's just stick them in and see what we and talk about the different what is that thing and what's a you know what's a water closet or what's a what's a Maori affairs and then and then do it again and go okay now you can creatively change it and do whatever you like how should it look if and you know how would it be different if if we just had right creative play so for so you that, the, the merging of the two was a little bit odd yeah yeah right. yeah what are we just, doing here yeah, yeah what are we doing where is it leading and and like like the creative stuff is leading you somewhere completely different from mm. the picture understood um, yeah yeah because so, i think in the original in the original as i planned it and certainly as i taught it last time it was using the original floor plan and the original labels but i felt that that was too limiting and i i'm extremely glad we got the gates of hell and the ideas room <laughs> because i i just kind of feel like with this group of people i wanted to do that but i hear you that it kind of pulled you in two different directions um that's quite interesting when that happens isn't it mm. yeah <clears throat> yeah 
like it conflicts my order of things. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what am I doing? And where and I and going? Mercado, yeah. I loved how you said, I don't really have a reason. I was just trying to be helpful. <laughs> 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 well, I think my thing was, I was kind of, it was interesting as someone sitting, who I, you know, this is my first time coming to one of these hui and um, zui, um, I uh, was, you know, there's when you're doing a group activity like this, especially when you can't see other people and things, mm. it's tempting just to kind of watch and, and mm. see what happens. And there is also the temptation there for me where it's just kind of filling up the spaces with things mm. and Mm -hmm. not necessarily thinking a whole lot whereas for me if it was more open-ended like you could choose what things were or what you thought was important to put in different places which would be a, a different activity mm. um, that would be a yeah that would be a um perhaps yeah it's a, yeah less more 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 um, prompting and, and less um, just kind of oh, I think this could go here and I don't know if that's right or what other people think or what sure. Sure. Mm. that's very interesting for me to hear that um, any other comments on what the experience was like I can see a place in the scaffolding of starting off with being given the names in the rooms as an exercise and then as you were suggesting Viv that the second iteration is, okay, now how would you design a, a parliament and what needs to be in there? So to me, it's almost like, yeah, this is a scaffolding exercise, doing this as it is. Thank you. I think I'll probably take that on for when I do this again. Um, any other comments before we go on? I'm just looking at time. We I, I will on. just be. Show now. Well. Yeah. Sorry. I'd just be interested as it is as our class tonight, um, well for a class. Once they'd done a bit of study and found out a little bit about Mr. Campbell and what happens mm -hmm. in different places, how would they rearrange things perhaps? Mm -hmm. Um nice. So this image might be something they return to again and think. Well, okay, now that we've learnt some, some more, how would we change it? Who else yes. was it who tried to speak there? It was me, yeah. I was mm. I I've just been thinking about what Annette said and and the the, the same there's a tension. The the reason this sorry, just I'm I'm starting three sentences at once. Uh, the, the 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 difference between this key and some of the other keys is that the, the the component parts are the givens because this is a, this is a, this is a historical building and the names and the the rooms are the history that that is history that's a given and those things we have to be careful about if we start changing those things or giving license to mm. invent other things we just have to be careful with it mindful of it mm -hmm. because it because it, the, the purpose of this is is for the the students to look at, at a historical building mm -hmm. and it doesn't so much matter in the way that this is done the arrangement of the rooms although afterwards you would show them how the actual building was arranged it was more for them to become familiar Yep. with the the vocabulary really and the kinds of decisions that were being made and the idea about a building which is predominantly paper it's about people carrying bits of paper the I, I'm, I'm not even sure they had telephones at this period of history but but somebody might know better than they I. they did do. have a telegraph but room so they had telegraphs that's right so they didn't have telephones but they did have telegraphs so there's an awful lot of unfamiliar vocabulary mm. there's a there's a lot of of what is the purpose of a parliament building you know what was what was the, what is a purpose of a building like that mm. but also how did that that building operate before technology before the kind of technology mm. that we take for granted if you if you if you in, if you provide opportunities to diverge from that there is a danger that you that the students will get 
interested more and more in inventions and, mm. and creating their and I totally fantasy. did that and and I'm glad I did that but I think in future what I'll do is what a few people have suggested which is invite people to operate within the 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 constraints of history first and then have a conversation about what that brings up and what we'd like to do differently because I can feel how it pull people in two directions yeah uh, but the but, but the event but the, there's an opportunity so you're right it it's it's not closing down things mm. so like the gates of that's fantastic that, op that opens up a whole sub layer as it were you know the, the the fact that there's the building the, the the rooms and the and the names of the rooms and the things that people do but but rooms and places do get names you know that don't go outside the building <laughs> you know they, they get they get you know I'm, I'm not it's not nicknames is it but they get they get kind of you know terms and things yeah. and that that something like that opens up a whole line of very interesting inquiry about for me it's about the kinds of things that go on this build inside this building that mm. people that, that the people who work in this building don't want the people outside to mm. know about mm. all the kinds of decisions that are made in dark mm. smoky rooms all the mm. decisions that are made with these mm. white men you know who want to control things and and do things it's a, it's it's a so if you don't, <laughs> this is the tension, I think, because <laughs> if you don't allow it, you don't get gates of hell. Yeah. You don't get that that whole other line of inquiry if you don't allow it. Mm. But if you do allow it, you have to be careful that it doesn't kind of fall apart and become incoherent. And I think our teachers here present have told us that the, the, the two at once felt a little bit unsure how to play the game. So that's great for me. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to try it next time with one with the tight and then the second time the conversation about about relabeling re redesigning maybe as a second round um from an inquiry perspective are you curious about what the can i ask everyone are you curious about what the floor plan of the parliamentary buildings was in 1877 there's a yeah everybody's not because i think it does achieve that you know it's not like just showing you a plan once we can't help this once we once our brains have engaged with something moved things around thought about why things might be where they are when you see the um the whiteboard the next whiteboard which is the plan of the hang on i'll share it with you sorry it's a whole different second one uh, not share whiteboard give me one second oh wait here's 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 the plan that i um adapted from the online source where i saw the floor plan of the parliament the only thing that i did was relabel it because in the quality of photograph it was quite difficult to see so there you go i'll give you a moment to have a look at that what do you notice? Well, Bell, Bell, Bellamy's and well, Bellamy's is different to where I put it, but the the tea room is is, is right close. where you put it. Yeah. Huh. Strangers is completely different to what I imagined. That's mm -hmm. not. That's not at all. I can't okay. see anything. You can't see anything. Well, it's just a little. Ah. What can, can you see? Oh, I don't know how to it's help. Just, uh, it's got a grey square with 99% in it. Oh, so strange. Okay. I, I don't, I'll oh, just have to, I've, have you got it? I've, I've okay, it. great, great. I put it to you that though we might have, I might another oh, time oh, slightly oh, do that activity oh, differently. Oh, I put it to you that when you meet this map, it is not a neutral experience. That you're you're looking at that going, oh, oh, I have thoughts, oh, because you've invested. You, you, mm. yeah. So, so in that sense, as an inquiry tool, it's been quite effective. I have thoughts about where, and I've just done the label that was done on the original floor plan, native. 
I have thoughts about where that meeting room was placed in the building since built since mm -hmm. spaces speak and relationships to other things speak. It feels very much like it's pushed to an edge. Yeah. You see what and I mean? Next to the strangers, next to the strangers. Oh, I know. And you have to get past the telegraph room and the strangers bit, and you're over in the corner with the housekeeper. Yeah, not a powerful position for that space. Although a very beautiful space when you see uh, when you see depictions of that space. If you go and look it up, it's an incredible, beautiful space with um, highly carved panels and uh, like Māori carving panels and, and so forth. It's a beautiful, beautiful space, but a bit shoved in the corner if we look at it from above. Um. I'm yeah. interested in what the strangers' rooms are all about. Yeah, I, I, I don't know because I haven't researched it, but I think it was to do with where, as because we thought the strangers would be looking over the parliament, didn't we? But I have a feeling it was certain parts of the room, parts of the building that people could be invited to that weren't the inner sanctum. So you'd come in through that door, and it kind of like meeting rooms in a school, you know, where you meet the parents. I think it's something like that. New members yeah. are right over there. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's pretty. It's do it, you know what? A lot of it is pretty close. Yeah. I mean, the house, the housekeeper, and the natives. Horrible term, but they are out on the edge, just like we imagine they would be. The lavatories are right in the middle. The kitchens mm -hmm. are there. Libraries are over on the left-hand side. The cabinet is right next to the House of Representatives. I mean, it, it, a lot of it is how we, we we laid it out, isn't it, really? I don't think it's... And the messengers are quite important by quite the... Quite central, the, yeah. yeah. Right next to the yeah. safe. It looks like yeah. they're the only ones who get to go into the yeah, safe. Yeah, they're right in the centre, aren't they? Right, right in the middle there. The one, the one bit was my fault was that I got completely sidetracked by the idea of the strangers looking down on the house of representatives so that that right hand wing on the house of representatives was was my was completely different different but this... not wrong because we were invited to make our own meaning no 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 i don't think anything wrong with it it's just it just it just shows how this 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 key can work to give you um an idea about the vocabulary and the way that the building was designed and by doing it yourself and then doing and then looking at how it was actually done at the time that gives you i, I think you look at it differently i do i'm I, much I, more I, interested in this than i would than i would have been if we hadn't done that exercise <laughs> good that's what we're going for so because it's now 10 past eight, i will just close things off um the key thank you everyone for participating in that and having a go and teaching me a few things about how it works or doesn't work digitally i'll keep it up there while i talk to you for one second um you will have noticed that we haven't done any role work we haven't done any drama we haven't done any embodying anybody we've been building a world effectively so um at this point in the key what it in, what it invites students to do is to imagine walking around this place and given that we are looking at a historical event, it would be important to clarify which place we're walking around. And I think we might imagine ourselves walking around this parliament as it was rather than our invented one. Although I'd really love to visit the gates of hell. I'm going there some sometime. Um, and, and it invites them to, to draw what they think this part of the building might have looked like. Again, it's about investing and, and deepening into it and then write a description. And, and this was really powerful when I did it with some other people at one stage. It, can you imagine writing a description as a messenger of hearing the sounds from the House of Representation Representatives as that as that uh, role hit the wall? It was it was just a really beautiful bit of writing that people did about that moment from the perspective of somebody else in the building even without doing it you can imagine how the housekeeper she's completely unaware of what's going on she's got things to prepare she's got things to do she's got um so the, i i really find that when you get to the writing part of this key is when it all sort of lands um yeah and 
so uh, the role taking in this example, the key, the, the key suggests that we spend quite a lot of time on that all important location and then imagine ourselves as someone within that location and then uh, do some writing from that place. Yeah, it's really cool. And you, I think you could you could launch a whole inquiry into the historical period from this time. Now, to clarify, I'm just going to jump out of that illustration. To clarify, um, it's not always uh, needs to be a historical place. It could be an invented place, couldn't it, Tim? The, um, the key could work, does work with an invented place as well, or would you always use it with... A real historical place. No, I, no, I think a, an imaginary place would work really, really well. In fact, the the one that that we're doing in the, you know, in the workshop, um, your tomorrow morning, my my this evening, <laughs> is um, is essentially an imaginary place. It's set at mm. a real time, um, so there's real historical facts around it, but it is entirely made up place. Right. Um, so that, so bear that in mind it. as well. Yeah, you could do it as an entirely fictional place. I think that would work really well. The the difference is between um having having a blank piece of paper and then creating it together and having the component parts and assembling yeah. it together. That's the difference. So in terms of planning for this one, um I hope you can see this slide I'm sharing. Um yeah, it, your context will, that you choose will meet your learning objectives. And we've got our we've got our hexagon here. And for this one, obviously, you're going to focus on a location. So if you're adapting this key, something that's made up of component parts, it could be a landscape, it could be a building, a settlement, a map. And you do need to kind of have a bit of information, if especially if it's a factual place, about that, the knowledge and skills you're going to be teaching. For the key, the key um, requires a description of the location. I started with that. You remember that description that dropped us into the story? You'll see when you get to the key that, that it happens a little later in the sequence, but it's the same idea. And then there is a bit of work for this one because you need to create the component pictures that can be put together in multiple ways. That took a bit of doing for Zoom white, whiteboard, but um, pieces of paper. Um, well, and then once you've got the resource, of course, you can use it again. And then some bits of paper for the children to do their writing. So what um yeah, what do you think? Is that is that a key you could see yourselves using? And can you think of contexts other than Parliament or wildlife sanctuaries that you could uh, create? I've just realized that I watched Fakarungu do this last week. Oh, <laughs> and you just made you it make sense in terms of a key because she we're doing um Faka Otirangi in the her journey over with the Kumara. Mm -hmm. And she set the scene of Faka Otirangi standing on the bank on the where she was looking out to the ocean, and she set the whole scene of what that looked like. And then she gave the tamariki um, bits of paper to create some of the things that were talked about in the scene, and then they are assembling all of that on a big mural. So you have just walked around that and made it all make sense <laughs> to me. When you see her tomorrow, ask her which key she was using. It could have been a simple image. Yeah. Thanks. That's great. So yeah, you could use it for a setting of of a of a story, um, of a local story like that. I definitely encourage we encourage you to have a go. Um, and when you've had a go, do share your planning with us as ever. We've got a, a website for those of you who haven't visited us before. We've got a website, trythisbook.org. And if you visit that, not only can you see each of the keys, but you can also click on a link where you can see where teachers have trialed and adapted the keys for different purposes. So um, yeah, we, we really encourage you to visit that and also come back and tell us what you've done with this key and other keys when we meet again. Uh, that's where we'll finish for tonight. Um, before I close, just any other comments from people here present? Thanks so much for joining in. Any other comments you'd like to make? Tim, anything from you? No, nope, no, nope, thank you. Yeah, well, thanks everyone. Um, once again, thanks for bringing your baskets of knowledge and, and meeting with my baskets of knowledge. <laughs> and we... Um, 
Kylie's going to give draw an image a go on Wednesday. That's great. Good luck with that, Kylie. Let us know how it goes. We'll see you again on um, the 1st of September, which is our next gathering. And we're going to look at a, a, a key there called Watch a Film Clip, which I, I've watched Tim use a number of times. It's one of your um, regulars, isn't it, Tim? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a simple and easy one to do. Simple, no easy. Set up like this one, which, uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining Thank us. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks for joining in. Kia ora. Just need to.